Hello students, welcome back. Um, today we're going to talk about chess notation. Now, chess notation is really important that you understand it before we move on, because we're going to be using it on every single lesson from now on, and you're going to need it for the rest of your chess career. Um, you need chess notation not only to record your own chess games, especially if you're playing in a tournament, but also to read and understand chess books. But aside from that, on the day-to-day as we talk, as you talk to the chess players, you're going to be referring to the chess squares by using the coordinates and the system that we're going to learn today. So with that being said, um, let's get to chess notation. And by the way, we're going to be learning the algebraic um, system. We have also the descriptive system, but we don't use that one anymore. The official one is the one that you're going to be learning today. First thing that we need to learn is that just like you have a first name and last name, each one of the squares on the chessboard has a first name and last name. And for this, we're going to use these letters that are meant to name the different files, and we're going to use the numbers that are meant to name the different ranks. And that's all we need to name the, the squares. So for instance, if we take a look at this square, we're going to call them by the letter that is at the bottom, and the number that is to the side. So this square is going to be C3. If we take a look at this square, it's going to be A1. And we always use the letter first. So another random square, this one, is going to be E6. This one, G7. Um, this one, H3. And these are going to be the coordinates, basically. So from now on, if I had to move a bishop here, I'm going to say, Oh, move the bishop to d4, and so on. So if we get this part, then the other component is going to be the letter that we assign to each one of the chess pieces. So uh, let me show you the letter assigned to each one of the pieces. For the rook, we're going to use r, because rook starts with r. So anytime you see r, it means that we're moving a rook. Bishop is going to be b. Queen, it's going to be Q. King, it's going to be K. Knight, is going to be N. Now, the knight, even though it starts with the letter K, the king already has the K, so we use the second letter in knight, which is N. And then for pawn, we don't use anything. We just use the coordinate of the square. So if you ever see just a coordinate, you're going to know that was the pawn that moved, uh, that moved there. So we already know the letter assigned to each one of the pieces, and we know how to name each one of the squares. So let's put it in practice now. And let me bring all of the pieces on the board. And let me start by moving this knight, for instance. So now, if I'm going to write down this move, I'm going to put N for knight, and then the name of the square. He's going to, that square is going to be F3. So look to the right, that's the name, that's the first move. So I put number one and f3. And then let's say the black pieces move. Let's say they move this pawn over here. Remember, for pawn, we don't put anything. So it's just going to be the name of the square, d5. And it's very important, guys, when you take notation that you understand we have each move is going to be composed of the white pieces move and the black pieces move. So move number one is white pieces, black pieces. Then if I do this move, See, that's move number two. So white pieces, black pieces, and so on. Now, just to show you another piece, the bishop. If I move the bishop, let's say here, that's going to be B, because the bishop is moving, and it's going to G4, so bishop G4. Now, this is not a big deal, but for the name of the piece, we use capital letter. For the name of the square, we use lowercase. So that's why you see capital B, and then lowercase, G, so bishop g4. Now there are a few other uh, symbols that we use in notation, and we're going to quickly go over it now. So for instance, um, when we capture something, we need to use an x. So let me show you what I mean. Let's say I move now the queen, I'm going to put the queen here, so that's q, d3, and now this bishop is going to take the knight. Well, you write it almost like I told you before. So you're going to put the bishop here, so that would be b, f, 
3. But since you're capturing something, you're going to put an X right after the B. And you'll see, you'll see it now. So you see, B, X, F3. And that X means I captured, I captured something on F3. It doesn't matter what I captured. If I captured, I put the X. So if you're reading a chess book, you're reading some notation, you see an X, that means you captured something on that, on that square. So B, X, F3. Now, if I capture with a pawn, this is the only one that could be a little bit tricky. Um, for the pawns, which we don't put P, we need to put the letter of the file where the pawn is sitting. So if I want to use this pawn, I need to put E, X, F3. So right here. So E, because the pawn was on the E file, X, F3. Now, if I take with this pawn, we're not going to put E anymore because this pawn is on a different file. So we put what? We put G, X, F3. So if I see this, that means that the pawn that was on the G file captured something on F3. And that's how we captured. Now, the other thing is check. So how do we write down check? Let me show you. Let's say I move now this pawn over here, G6. And now we're going to move number five. And on number five, I'm going to put my queen here. And from there, I'm going to be attacking the king, which is check. So for check, we just write down the move normally. But then at the end, we put a plus sign. And that means check. So here we are. You go. So Q, B5, the queen moved to B5. But we put the plus at the end because we're doing check. Again, we're reading something. We see a plus sign. It means that was a check. Now let's say they just put the knight here. So and C6. The next is going to be castling. How do we write down um, castling? Well, uh, let me just make a few moves to show you castling. So knight c3, knight f6, bishop g5, bishop g7, and now both sides are ready to castle. And let me do one more move for whites, just to allow the black pieces to castle first. So if we castle to the king side or to the short side, we're going to use 0-0. Zero zero. So you'll see it now on the right. I castled. And this is what you write down, 0-0. Zero zero. Now, if I castle to the queen side or the long side, you're going to do almost the same thing. But this time, it's going to be three zeros. And you could think about it uh, like the rook moved three steps. So the rook moved one, two, three. We used three zeros. Over here, the rook moved one and two. So that's castling. Now, there's something else we need to talk about. And that's when we capture M percent. Some of you maybe you don't even remember about M percent, but like I said, we're gonna keep going back to it until you really get the hang of it. But let me show you how M percent is written. And for that, I need to do a few moves, and that's going to help me show you something else. Let's say I move the queen here, I move the pawn, just to make M percent happen. Uh, but then here I'm going to move one of the rooks. And I'm gonna move this rook, I'm going to put it right here. Now, notice that both rooks could go to the eight. So in this case, I need to specify which rook I'm moving. And for that, I just use the file where my rook is. So if, if this rook is going to the 8, I need to put R for rook, and then A, because the rook is on, on the A file, R, A, D, 8. And you're going to see it on the right, see? R, A, D, 8. If I had used the other rook, then I put R, F, D, 8. So whoever is reading my notation, if I just put R, D, 8, without specifying, they wouldn't know which rook I moved. But with this notation, you're going to know that it was the rook sitting on the A file. So with that out of the way, let's continue with our ampersand um, notation. Let's say I move the queen back. And now remember, for ampersand, if one of my opponent's pawn moves two steps and lands next to one of my pawns, I could do ampersand by just going like this. So basically, I just write it like I write any other pawn capture. So my pawn is sitting on the A file. I put A, X, B, 6, because I'm actually landing on B, 6. And I captured the pawn. See? A, X, B, 6. So with ampersand explained, we only have a few other uh, symbols. For instance, uh, let me just do this move to get it out of the way. So how do we write down um, checkmate? How do we write down when we do a good move? How do we write down when we do a bad move? And we also have promotion. So 
First, let's talk about checkmate. Let's say, let's say I go over here, they move the rook, so I move a pawn, get the rook up. I'm doing this fast just to show you checkmate. I'm doing this random moves. Now, if this rook goes all the way down, that's going to be checkmate. Rook's attacking the king, the king cannot capture because the other rook is behind. And notice what I write down at the end of the move. So you're going to see I put R, A1, that was my move, but then at the end I put this um, hashtag symbol or pound, whatever you want to call it, or oh, tic-tac-toe. <laughs> so this is actually checkmate. Whenever you finish the game, you're going to put the hashtag. And that's it. Now, let me bring it back, actually up to this point. And here I'm just going to take the pawn. And again, just to, to show you how to uh, notate promotion, I'm going to do this other random moves for the black piece. I'm just going to go here, then I take again, let's say they move. And now if I get to the end, I'm just going to write down the coordinate. So that would be H8. But then I need to put equals. So H8 equals whatever piece I ask for. If I ask for a queen, it's going to be H8 equals Q because the pawn became a queen. If I ask for a knight, it's going to be H8 equals N and so on for the for the other pieces. So I'm going to choose the queen and you're going to see it there. H8 equals Q and then you see the plus sign at the end because this is a check. So with that said guys we only have two other things. How do you write down when someone does a really good move? Well you're going to put an exclamation sign. If you see a, a question mark it means it was a bad move. Now, this last two, the exclamation sign and the question mark, uh, you're going to see them more on chess books and magazine articles because we never write them on our own notations. Like this is more for experts to, to put them on, on, on these articles. But I think we really get the, the idea. We know how to use the notations. And to be honest, at this point in this program, um, I just need you to really understand the coordinates. Like if I say uh, move the bishop to d4, you know what d4 is. And please get familiarized with that because again we're going to use them for now on, on every lesson. So with that being said, um, until the next time.